The hunt for Quan Chi had led Scorpion to the palace of Shang Tsung. Scorpion entered the palace through a hidden passage. As he made his way through the lower levels, he was discovered by the two Oni he had previously encountered while in the nether realm. Shang Tsung had secretly allied with Molak and Tron as a backup defense against Quan Chi. The two Oni had been hidden in an underground chamber and would periodically threat mortals to keep them satisfied. Scorpion fought well, but was overpowered by Molak and Tron. Although they could not consume the ninja specter, they devised another means for eliminating their foe that would satisfy their cruel nature. The only brought Scorpion before the portal to the heavens that Shang Tsung had tapped as a source of limitless souls. They hurled him into the Solnado, and his hell-spawn body was ripped apart by the purity of that realm. Jax had a score to settle with the traitor he knew as Su Hao. Now revealed to be a member of the Red Dragon, Su Hao had infiltrated the Special Forces Outer World Investigation Agency and destroyed it with a miniature nuclear weapon. Making good on his promise, Jax eventually caught up with Su Hao and ripped the implant from his chest in retribution. Su Hao died a most painful death. The Deadly Alliance was successful in reviving the mummified remains of the Dragon King's undefeatable army. Shen Tsung, however, began to realize that his relevance in the partnership had evaporated once his talents for soul transplantation were no longer needed. The balance of power within the Deadly Alliance had seemingly been undone. Fearing betrayal, he secretly instructed Kano to steal Quan Chi's amulet in an attempt to gain control of the army. Since part of the soul transfer spell included the command to obey he who possesses the amulet, the army would obey only Shang Tsung and not Quan Chi once the amulet was in his possession. Amulet in hand, Shang Tsung revealed his betrayal to Quan Chi and commanded the army to destroy the sorcerer. Shang Tsung would succeed where others had failed. He would conquer the realms. He would conquer Earth. Rage fueled Kung Lao's thirst for revenge. The memory of holding his fellow monk's broken body on the late tie of the Wuxi Academy grounds consumed him as he rained blow after blow down upon Shang Tsung. Kung Lao had finally mastered the attack Bo Racho had taught him. The sorcerer could not withstand his whirlwind assault. Shang Tsung begged for mercy. Kung Lao granted him none. Upon his return to Earthrealm, Kung Lao stood before the modest shrine to Liu Kang, which had been erected by the Wuxi initiates during his absence in Outworld. He lit a stick of incense and placed it among the others already burned there. He bowed his head and prayed for safe passage to the afterlife for his friend and brother. With Shang Tsung's death, Liu Kang's spirit could rest peacefully. Earth realm was safe once more, but at a terrible cost. The work of the White Lotus Society had become more important than ever. Li Mei had been promised that her people would be freed from enslavement if she could win the tournament held by the Deadly Alliance. Now that she had emerged victorious, the true purpose behind the tournament was finally revealed to her. Her soul would be the last one Shang Tsung needed to completely revive the Dragon King's lost army. Her people would never be freed, and Lu Mei herself 
would remain trapped inside the mummified remains of a dead soldier, cursed to serve the deadly alliance forever. Kenshi had finally caught up with Shang Tsung in Outworld. Years ago, Kenshi had been manipulated into releasing the souls of his warrior ancestors. Shang Tsung had consumed those souls and left Kenshi to die in the tomb. The ordeal left Kenshi blinded, but the sword of his ancestors let him out of the depths. To redeem himself, Kenshi had vowed to free his ancestors from their captor. He cut Shang Tsung down with his ancestral sword, and a blast of souls was instantly released. The spirits of the warrior kings re-entered the sword as Kenshi held it above his head. His duty fulfilled, he could not return to Earth realm. of the lava burned out Cyrax's sensors almost immediately. He cast about blindly in the infernal pit, searching for the orb Mitara sent him to locate. Cyrax found it resting upon a small submerged pedestal beneath the molten depths. As soon as he climbed her to the surface, she demanded he hand over the orb. Mitara had promised to return Cyrax to Orthron once the orb had been retrieved. Taking her necklace in hand, she uttered a mystical incantation. A scrolling portal opened around Cyrax, and he only had time for a solemn bow before he was swept into the gateway. 